how the power is distributed to the end consumer. Uh, but there is a whole, uh, you might consider that, you know, you might think that uh, even the grid today, we have a generation system, we have a transmission system, we have a distribution system, but how is smart grid different from the traditional grid? So I'm also going to go into that, but I'm uh, mostly going to cover the um, communication aspects of it because that is uh, what uh, my area of uh, interest is these days. And it is al also the area of interest of uh, you know many um, countries in the world these days. So I'm also going to go into uh, the standardization efforts that have been uh, carried out till now. And the issues, uh, obviously, what are the open research issues that might be of interest to you? Maybe not now, but in the future. And then I'm going to talk briefly about you know what we are doing, uh, just a brief overview of what we are doing in our research center at UBT. Uh, so uh, basically, smart grid, uh, you know the traditional grid, it doesn't have uh, a two-way communication infrastructure present between the electric utility provider and the end consumer. It is basically you 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 just utilize electricity. Then what happens is that at the end of the month or a certain date on the month, there is a certain guy, a meter reader, who comes to your home or maybe outside your home. He checks the electricity meter manually. He notes down the reading and then he bills you accordingly. And also, it's not necessary that the person comes on exactly same day every month. It might change. And, you know, it's, it might be a bit, the system might be a bit efficient here, but in Pakistan and in many other countries, what happens is that sometimes the, the meter reader, he doesn't bother to come over and based on the previous data, he just writes down a certain figure and he bills you. So he might end up billing you more, he might end up billing you less. So that is not a very efficient way of billing, uh, you know, a consumer. So just to give, an, give you an example, a smart grid, first of all, it has to have a certain communication infrastructure in place. I'm going to go into the exact technologies which, which are going to be, which are envisaged to be there in the smart grids, uh, the backhaul connectivity options, the local area connectivity options, how the different utilities can connect to the grid, how they can com contribute to the grid, how the end consumer contributes towards, uh, you know, how, how he gives his feedback to the electric utility provider, how the utility provider can uh, provide him dynamic tariffs. Now, first of all, if a communication infrastructure is present, let's suppose, I'm not going to go uh, into the specific details, I'm going to cover that later uh, during the presentation, but let, let's assume that there is a certain communication infrastructure present uh, between the consumer and the electricity utility provider, and the consumer's data is transmitted at real time to the electricity utility provider, then that can give uh, a, a, a good indication to the utility provider about the energy <coughs> consumption habits of a certain uh, consumer how he utilizes energy, uh, what are his uh, peak demands at certain 24-hour period, because there, uh, there can be different kinds of consumers, basically. You know, there might be a person who's living alone, he has certain office timings, there might be a certain person who has, uh, you know, he works, he has a night shift. So the, the electricity demands for a certain consumer might vary depending upon his energy consumption habits. So in a smart grid, what happens is that we have, first of all, what we do is, instead of a normal static meter which is present there at the premises of the consumer, what we do is, we replace that with another meter, we just call it a smart meter. Now what the smart meter has, uh, what, what is different with a smart meter is that uh, it is supposed to be tamper proof, nobody can mess with this, uh, the smart meter, it is supposed to be completely digital, and it can run, we, are, we should be able to run certain applications on that smart meter as well in order to configure uh, and uh, transmit our energy requirements to the utility provider at real time. Now, first of all, what this does is that it eliminates the need for a certain person to come over to your house and manually read the meter because if the smart meter has a certain appropriate communication interface, it might be a wired interface, it might be a wireless interface, right? If I'm talking about a wireless interface, then the smart meter in order to uh, tra transmit the data in real time towards the utility provider, obviously it has to be a backhaul, wireless backhaul connectivity option. It can't be done through either Zigbee or uh, wireless LAN or the short range wireless uh, networks. It has to be either uh, GPRS, it has to be either Edge, it ha uh, might be HSDPA, it might be LTE, it might be LTE advanced in the future. So, uh, another thing to uh, take into consideration is that once we have a smart meter in place, the energy uh, consumption of a certain <coughs> consumer can be transmitted at real time to the electricity service provider. Another difference between the smart grid and the traditional grid is that in traditional grids, electricity grids, you have a certain electricity provider, he provides you electricity and he charges you statically. There are not many flexible pricing schemes available. 
but in future uh, the smart grid it is going to be dynamic in a way that uh, it also has to uh, you know people are thinking about integrating renewable energy sources into the traditional grid and then as you know that in uh, alternate energy sources although it is a very good idea but the problem is that you cannot completely you can never completely depend on alternate energy sources the reason is that let's suppose if you are integrating solar energy into your traditional grid now the intensity of the sun now let's suppose uh, take into consideration the weather here in london now i have been here for one week and i have hardly seen the sun you know for uh, if you uh, add up all the hours i think it should be hardly 6 or 7 hours throughout the week i have seen the sunlight so the problem is that in some cases it might not be feasible in some places it might be feasible where you have you know uh, the, the sun is always you know uh, just like in peshawar it's like 50 degrees celsius uh, these days where i'm from so it's quite hot and you you know this the idea of solar energy is quite feasible there but even then you cannot completely rely on solar energy because the, the thing is that in those places where the weather changes dynamically uh, you cannot have a constant supply of electricity from the solar energy source uh, when you talk about wind energy now again there is a problem that you do, you don't know when the wind is going to blow what is it uh, what's the intensity of the wind what is its direction what is the velocity in a certain direction now depending on these factors you can get either more electricity generated from the wind turbines or you can have less ele electricity generated so you cannot have a c consistent supply from renewable energy sources so you can never rely completely 100% on renewable energy sources but Uh, the, the, the the advantage is that some of your demand requirements can be met by the renewable energy sources now once you integrate the renewable energy sources into the traditional grid now what happens is that uh, you know you have different modes of electricity generation you can uh, generate electricity uh, by burning furnace oil that is thermal generation you can have uh, electricity generated by the flow of water that is hydrogen generation you can have it via uh it can be nuclear generation so depending upon the source of electricity electricity generation that also determines the cost of electricity generation in in our country this the if the source is hydel if it is generated through the, either the run of the river dams or you know uh, the some of the larger dams the the electricity cost is much cheaper if you go towards thermal generation obviously you are burning furnace oil <coughs> oil is expensive these days so the cost of the electricity goes up but when you go towards renewable energy sources then the cost comes down com uh, considerably it it uh, comes down uh, you know to uh, quite less amount uh, compared to the other sources now when you integrate renewable energy sources in the traditional grid what happens is that uh, uh, when you integrate them then you know you can determine the cost of electricity electricity depending upon different uh, 24 hour periods because at a certain time of the day you might have more electricity generated into the grid <coughs> from renewable sources so you can offer lesser prices to the end consumer at some time periods throughout the day you might be generating more electricity from other sources so the cost of the electricity should be more so with smart grid comes if you integrate uh, you know the uh, alternate energy sources in the smart grid with that integration comes um, the idea of uh, you know providing dynamic tar tariffs to the un end consumer at certain times of the day you can provide lesser uh, tariffs to the end consumer <laughs> at certain times of the day you can the tariffs might be quite high so in order to uh, enable the end consumer to participate in um, in this particular scenario you have to have a two way communication infrastructure uh, in place between the end consumer and the Uh, electricity service provider so this is just a general representation of how uh, you know things are supposed to be uh, you know it is just uh, an abstract framework but it is similar to uh, many different proposals from you know uh, different utility providers and different uh, uh, vendors uh, in different countries of the world it is almost a similar ar architecture some people might have you know 20% or 30% uh, different implementations but generally it is the same kind of implementation and you can see that we have commercial buildings we have uh, we can have like industrial setups we have res residential areas